Welcome to part two of why is the BMW M2 the best car the BMW makes. Now, if you missed the first video that I posted yesterday, let's roll a highlights clip, but you gotta check that out. Highlights, please. Honestly, the M2 is the perfect size, weight, suspension setup, power, steering, and just downright fun experience. And that's why I love it so much. You know, as people want bigger and bigger cars, they want more comfort, they want more safety. Well, performance suffers. The new BMW M4, M5, M6, they're getting heavier and heavier each year. And they're getting much bigger, actually, size-wise as well. And the problem is weight plays a large role in the performance of a vehicle. Get this for instance, the BMW M4 GTS, it's praised for its low weight, it's the most hardcore version of the M4. It weighs 3,500 pounds. The M2, just a standard M2, no special edition, super track focused version, weighs 3,450 pounds. So you already have a weight advantage in a car that's not meant to be an only track focused vehicle. And that's a good thing because less weight means more fun. The M2 feels fantastic for a turbocharged car. Under the hood lies a three liter twin scroll single turbo. Just because it's called twin scroll does not mean that it has two turbochargers in line six cylinder. It makes 365 horsepower and 343 pound feet of torque. That rock is the car to 60 in a little bit under four seconds. But the best part is because of the forged internals, you can crank the boost up. BMW was conservative on the boost, obviously not to outshine the M4, but you can do that in a not that difficult fashion. More along with M2 simplicity are the options. You wanna fully spec out your M2? Well, you're in luck because it is extremely easy to do so. There's just four color options. I like Long Beach Blue Metallic the best, the metallic colors are a $550 option. The white color, Alpine White, fitted here, which is my second favorite color, is free. What about interior options? Well, it's simple as well. There's only one interior color, and that is black. That's all you really need. How about trim panels? Nope, only one option, and that is carbon fiber. That is the correct option. There is one option, however, the executive package, $1,400. It gives you a rear camera, which is honestly necessary. You don't wanna bang up your new M2. It also gives you parking sensors as well as a heated steering wheel. But other than that, you can't really customize your M2. Now, Alex, the owner of this car, has modified it tastefully with carbon fiber bits, an aftermarket exhaust, and of course, HRE wheels. It's also got a tune from our good friends at VF Engineering. For 995 bucks, you've got 60 more horsepower and 90 more pound feet of torque. It really brings this thing to life. What I like most actually about the VF tune is that it crackles on startup, kind of like an M4 GTS. The car sounds a lot meaner and the throttle response when you put it in sport mode, bam, instant. Transmission options. You can get a six speed manual transmission, which is the same transmission found in the M240i, just with a better linkage for sexier shifts. Honestly, that is absolutely the route to go. The M2 feels like a car that needs a manual transmission. It's much more go-kart feeling when it is with a manual. And the other thing is the manual transmission program for the M2 is going away. So you're no longer gonna be able to get an M2 in a manual very shortly and that's honestly kind of a crime. Now, part of that is because they actually have to do separate crash tests for cars with different transmissions. How crazy is that? You build a car with a DCT and you build it with a manual. There's actually a lot of costs involved in keeping the manual transmission. You have to smash a whole bunch of manual cars. Of course, research and development, making sure that the transmission, the engine placement can be accepting of both the manual and the automatic. Crazy enough though, the other transmission option, the seven speed DCT, which is of course featured in the M3, M4, M5, M6, all the M's in the family, might be going away soon too. The next generation of M5 is gonna have a ZF eight speed automatic transmission. The ZF eight speed is kind of killing the game to be honest. It has all the practicality of an automatic transmission and the shifts are instant. But the real reason why I love the M2 more than any BMW 
is the way that it drives. Thanks to its 3,450 pound curb weight, the M2 feels incredibly nimble. It also feels really small around you. It is, of course, a small car, but the driving position, the way you sit in the M2, the way the steering wheel falls perfectly in your hands, and you look out over the large visibility over the front hood, and the way the hood slopes down instantly so that you can see just a tiny bit in front of the front wheels is just awesome. Part of the incredible handling is thanks to having the front and rear subframes of the BMW M4. Those are rigidly attached to the vehicle for more stiffness. It does mean the car suffers a bit in terms of ride quality if you're looking for a comfortable car, but who gives a crap? This is a BMW M2, it's supposed to be fun, so we want as stiff as possible. It's definitely not harsh by any means. You could daily drive this car, but it is a little bit stiffer than you're used to. It also has an electronically controlled active rear limited slip differential. That means you can hoon it around turns, drift the rear wheel drive little beast easily, and it has plenty of power to do so. <laughs> the traction control in the M2 is actually slightly less invasive than the M4 is, and I like that. Like M Dynamic Mode, it allows you to play with the car a little bit more before it cuts in. A lot of cars have problems with being too intrusive in terms of their traction. Of course, safety is important, but when you're buying a car like this, you're going to want to have some fun and put the car a little bit sideways. And having those aids save you at the last minute without being too annoying is an awesome benefit. Let's give a little acceleration run here. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a little bit for the boost to get going, but it still feels like a very linear progression. Let's talk about that exhaust. Obviously, this exhaust is aftermarket, frequency intelligent. The crackles, oh my God, when you let off the exhaust are just intoxicating. If you just lay your foot on the exhaust a little bit, on and off, on and off, it just crackles all day long. <laughs> Oh my God. Looks wise, I absolutely love the way the BMW M2 looks as well. It's squatty, aggressive stance on the road. It's small, but it's muscular. The wide hips in the rear, of course, the quad exhaust, the inlets in the front that look really aggressive. It looks like a smaller, meaner M6, and I love that. I also love that they kept the signature side blades like they have on the M4, and they didn't have on the M235i or M240i. Looks like the road's cleared up a little bit. Let's push this thing through its paces. Whew. Oh my God. <laughs> the steering response is so direct and you can actually feel what's happening underneath the car. If you roll the windows down slightly, you can hear when the wheels start to break loose, but more than that, you can actually feel what the car is doing while it's happening instead of when it's too late. A lot of cars nowadays are too disconnected from the road to try to please the mass market. But what the M2 has done is said, screw the mass market, let's make a car that's just appealing to enthusiasts. And that's what this is. You wouldn't have any fun if you didn't like driving fast. This isn't a car that rewards you for driving slow. Of course, you can drive slow around town, but you have so much fun pushing this to its limits. I, I can't imagine driving this thing in any other fashion than absolutely hooning it around at all times. Oh my God. <laughs> Like all the performance BMWs of the day, we've got an analog tachometer and speedo, and then we have a digital readout underneath that to let us know what gear we're in, how badly we're doing in terms of fuel economy, although I don't give a flying shit what the fuel economy is right now because this car is so damn fun to drive. Oh my God. I think we need to flip around so that you can actually see me. So there you have it. The M2 is an absolute riot to drive. It's just... It's the most fun car BMW makes, far and away, in terms of the handling, just the excitement, how, how excited I am the entire time driving it. I mean, I've driven a lot of cars, and this thing puts a smile on my face the entire time. I guess we can talk a little bit about the interior. I mean, the seats, very, very supportive. They're small, so if you are a pretty big individual, 
you might not enjoy them too much. Wow, turning radius is solid. Interior is very simple. Front dash area is clean. You got a nice screen that's popped up in the center. Looks a little bit like it was glued on after the fact, but you know what? I don't care whatsoever because this thing is such a hoot. <laughs> Rear space, I mean, pr pretty much negligible. You're not gonna fit people back there with any sort of comfort. But when you're up in the front, the M2, such a joy. Well, special thanks to my buddy Alex, F87.M2 on Instagram. I'll put that up here if you want to follow him. He's got epic pictures of this car. We're actually doing a photo shoot right now of it and another M2. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I'm going to end this with some point of view footage. Let's hit that. Boom.